So in this video, let's take a look at the Preferences tab in Core Framework, where we have quite a few settings that we can go over. So first, you'll see the project settings. Now here you can set your project title. In this case, I've called mine Ulpris uh, Turquoise. That's just the main colors I'm using, so I'm just calling it Turquoise. And if I go to Manage Project and export this project, then it's going to use this name in the file name. The default theme, so this is what you want your website theme to be defaulted to. In my case, I want it to default to the dark theme because my design for this project in particular is kind of a dark theme style. And if I save changes and just show you, so you can see that the overall design is going for a dark aesthetic. Now, if I change this to light, you'll see my design actually is not really made for light mode. So that is why I'm using dark in this area. Now, if you are using variables uh, along with dark mode and light mode, then it would be better to use auto because this is going to use the visitor's preferences. But in my case, just for this particular project, I want the dark mode to be set as default. Next, we have font and spacing. Now, obviously, this is completely up to you. Some users prefer using 100% and some users prefer 62.5. By default, we use 62.5%. If I change this to 100%, you'll see that all of my fonts and texts on the front end go really small because I've been designing everything using 62.5%. So that's what I'm going to stick with here. Next, inside font and spacing, we have the minimum screen width. Uh, this is by default set to 320 pixels. And we also have the max screen width, which now gets applied to a variable that we can use within our builders. So let me show you a quick example of this using Bricks Builder. So you can see here, if using a website builder, we recommend using var max screen width to set your website width in global styles. So I'm just going to open up my homepage here. Now you can choose to put this in your global styles if you want. I don't have a theme styles. So in this case, I typically like to apply this to each section because I prefer BEM methodology. So here's my hero one container. So you can see here the width has been set to that variable. And that means that we can change this in core framework and Basically, all of the containers will change along with this variable. So if I save this, show you the front. So here's what it looks like currently. Now, if I change this to something a little bit wider, 400 and save, then you'll notice that everything should become a little bit wider. Uh, you couldn't really tell here because I have limited my content, but if I come down here, now this CTA did become wider. If I just change that back to 200 and save changes, the CTA did become a little bit more narrow. If I just do um, something extreme so you can actually see that, you can see that is changing here. This is full width by design. And uh, let's change this back to 1200. So you can see the title just got a little bit wider there. In any case, yes, this is a useful variable um, with Oxygen Builder. If my memory serves me correct, I believe in their global styles, they limit the unit. So I don't think you can use the variable in Oxygen Builder. Uh, so just to double check that, here is an Oxygen Builder instance, uh, global styles, width and breakpoints. So by default, the page width is 1400. Now, yes. So as you can see, I cannot click on this, unfortunately, which means we cannot set a variable here, which is quite unfortunate. So you just have to make sure that this number here matches that of the one in core framework here. All right, in the next section here, we have post CSS. Now this just basically means that if you're using any properties which require vendor prefixes, then they will be added automatically. Now we have written about this just a little bit in our documentation. So for example, placeholder will automatically become like this. So it will just add fallbacks where necessary using JavaScript. Here we can convert pixel values to rem units. Uh, this is used for typography and spacing. And finally, we have smooth linear gradients as well. So if you have a linear gradient with just three steps, sometimes that might produce some banding in some browsers. And what this will do is it will attempt to add more steps in the gradient to prevent such banding. Now here, this is quite a dangerous area because we've had some users who have added class prefixes, custom ones, um, after their website's finished. Now, the problem with that is you would have to go through every single class and every single variable if you're doing it here too, and basically rename them because this should be done as it says in the red boxes before building your website. So please just be careful with this area, okay? Next up, we have the accessibility and usability section in the preferences. So we have 
have reduced motion. So this will basically respect the user's accessibility animation settings. Okay. So if this is toggled on, then if you also have in your operating system settings animations turned off, then you'll no longer see any animations. We also have this one disable hover on touch devices. So on any touch device, this will disable all hover styles. Something quite new that we have here is the ability to enable a clickable parent. Now by default, this class is called expand click. I've toggled this one on and I'll just show you a quick example of this. Now please bear in mind that it says here parent wrapper must be set to relative. So here I have a card as you can see and here I have a title which is linked. This is the only link in this card, nothing else is linked. So if I add here expand click, there it is as you can see. So you can see nothing actually changes in the builder, but if I save this and go to the front end, now you can see that I can hover over the card and it's all expanded from this one. So if I remove that class just to show you, so now it is not expanded, but only this title now is clickable as this is the only link. So let's add it back. And once again, as you can see, the whole card is now clickable. And if you do not want this outline, what we can do in Core Framework is disable focusable parent on click. Make sure this one is toggled on, save. And now if I refresh this, it is still clickable, but as you can see, there's no longer the outline. Next, we have readability. This just adds group comments to the final uh, CSS. So if I just save changes here, and if I scroll down, you can see that depending on your group names, these will be made into comments in your CSS. Plugin preferences. So basically here we can choose the theme of Core Framework itself. By default, this is set to dark. If I want the Core Framework UI to be in light mode, we can change it here. And we also have a gray mode as well. If you're planning on uninstalling Core Framework, then we do recommend toggling this on, but please be careful because this cannot be undone. As you can see, it removes all data on uninstall, and this includes classes and colors from the builders. So once again, guys, please be careful with this option here. Next up, uh, this is new to 1.7. So here we have a white labeling option. So you can change the name of your plugin, you can change the icon, plugin author, description, and you can also choose to hide the plugin. So let me go through this with you. Let's call this Luke's CSS framework. I'm going to choose a different icon here. So as you can see, I chose this very pretty hat. Uh, the plugin author, let's use our name. Uh, for the description, an awesome CSS framework. Now I'm not going to hide it just for now, but let me save changes and show you. So if I go back to the dashboard, you can see in the left panel here, we have the new icon and the new name. And if I go to plugins, installed plugins, you can see here that we also have the author name and the new description. Now, if you want to hide the plugin, that is also optional. So what you can do is toggle this one on, save changes. And if I go back to the dashboard, you'll notice that this will disappear. So now I no longer have access or your clients no longer have access to Core Framework. Now, in order to get back to Core Framework, you will need the slug and we will put this slug in the documentation so that you have access to it. But basically it's forward slash WP admin slash admin dot PHP question mark page equals Core Framework with a hyphen. And once you're back in, I'm just going to untoggle this to bring it back. Now, if I want the defaults to come back, I can simply delete all of these fields. We can delete the icon by hovering over it and clicking on this bin. I will delete those as well. And now if I refresh this page, you can see we are back to the default. And the final setting here is to reset everything to default. Now this is dangerous territory because once you do this, you'll not be able to get back your old framework unless obviously you export it first. So I'll just go ahead and export this and then go to preferences. And I'm just going to show you an example of a reset here. So as you can see, I've just reset it and I come back to the onboarding screen. So let's use variables only, continue, finish. And as you can see, everything has been reset. So save changes. And uh, let me just go ahead and enable dark mode for my colors. I'm just quickly gonna make these colors look a little bit better for dark mode. And let's go to preferences, make sure that I change this back to dark and save. And here is my website after it's been reset. Now, obviously I don't want this design. I wanna bring back my old design. I can do that. Just go to manage project, click on browse files. So I've just imported my old one here. As you can see, the colors are different. Overwrite all, save changes. And hopefully if I refresh, I get back my old design. So there you have it guys. That is an overview of the preferences in Core Framework. I hope you find this useful. Please do check out our documentation for more information. If you need any assistance, please don't hesitate to get in touch and we will help you. Thank you.